First up, Sydney's World War II built Newington Armoury has seen many changes over the years, but no one could have envisaged its present incarnation, a creative hub in the once arts depleted western suburbs. Painters, writers and performing artists have all contributed to this unusual project, as local girl Fenella discovered. It has a sort of a bleak element to it, because there's just nothing here. The whole place is very evocative, particularly when you're on your own here. This is not too far from my old stomping ground. I grew up around here, about five kilometres that way in Homebush on the other side of the railway line. But you see, when I was growing up, this was not an arts district. The things that it was known for was the rubbish tip, the abattoir, there was lots of industry, Silverwater Jail, of course. And there was this place, the armoury. It was basically used to store naval munitions for, uh, for 100 years or so, dating from the late uh, 19th century. This particular building, the largest one on the site, is a 500 square metre explosive stall that we've adapted for reuse and turned into a visual arts gallery. This is such a vast space and um, particularly what I notice in Sydney is the fact that there is limited space for artists to create work, studio space. And obviously rent rent is so high, so it results in smaller gallery spaces. So this is unique, and I think that it's a, a lovely journey for people to come out here and experience the the art, but also the broader sort of um, landscape around it as well. There are 21 artists represented in this exhibition, and it ranges from sculpture to painting to video installation. Now, some of the works directly respond to the armory, the look, the feel, and the space, like this bloke's work. Andrew May. When you begin the residency, you, you're given a set of keys to a certain amount of buildings, so, and a lot of the work, a lot of the materials has been left behind by, um, when it was used by the Navy, like lights and bits and pieces that you can come across that you can incorporate into works. Gary Dimaggian's installation is the largest in the exhibition, an upended shipping container on a pile of pallets with a cash register suspended from the interior ceiling, and it's directly inspired by the site. And I've been thinking along these lines for some time, working with shipping containers as, as a symbol of trade and pallets, etc. So in this case, I've tried to combine those uh, elements into conjuring up some sort of house of worship uh, and, uh, and hopefully giving it a little sense of abandonment, like a dilapidated old church in a countryside. And why does it suit this site? I mean, it is outside the gallery, which is, you know, just through here, through a tunnel. Why, why this work in this space? I feel best outside, so outside of walls. And I'm an early bird and uh, I used to come here at the crack of dawn and uh, got to experience the sight in you know, sheer silence. And being in the middle of this field, uh, engulfed in fog, uh, it's, a, it's an eerie place to be. And that eeriness also inspired Marianne Wick. It does have a very evocative feel around here and I think sometimes, it, I wouldn't say deathly, but it has another, it's very spiritual around here. I think that's what I'm trying to say. Any ghosts while you're staying here? Well, it's funny because sometimes if you're in the studio on your own, you'll hear something and I'm just hoping it's one of the lizards, but and sometimes the door will swing open, sometimes the light will flicker on and off, sometimes a little shadow or a moment. And I know it's probably me just in my imagination being on my own, but I know that there, there I think there are ghosts around here. Maybe they're your, just, just your friends playing games on you. <laughs> yeah, I know. Trying to freak Marianne out. Perhaps the most humorous work is the video installation by Daniel Moody Cunningham, filmed during his residency at the Armoury. It's an appropriation of the strikingly choreographed and memorable sequence from the 1988 film Beaches. I am the captain, and this is my shrine. It's incredibly camp. I mean, it's one of those films that is a real guilty pleasure. The O Industry sequence from the film takes place when Bette Midler um, is this aspiring actress and she finally hits the big time. She gets her first big break with an amateur theatre group and they perform this kind of pantomime-like um, song called O Industry. And in my version, the, the faceless workers are replaced with these kind of naval zombie automatons and I'm like a kind of ringmaster that lords over them. And so what I really liked is that this kind of um, site, which is a, you know, naval base from the late 19th century, is now a kind of tourist park. And I was interested in then, you know, applying that to this very kind of 
camp popular culture moment. <laughs> Venues like this can either go two ways. They can just be sort of demolished and turned into apartments, which is pretty standard. Or given the opportunity, artists should be able to get into places like this because they'll use it for something completely different than what it was actually designed for and bring a sort of different energy to it. Sites like Cockatoo Island and um, even Casula Powerhouse, these places that are very industrial, they kind of have all of the kind of iconography of a past, but it's kind of repurposed and, and then reused in the, in the present. Well, there you go. And you can see the Armoury exhibition for yourself each weekend at Sydney's Newington Armoury until September the 27th. Fenella. Now, one of the big things that's been happening, of course, in the arts news over the last couple of weeks has been the screening of the documentary called Ten Conditions of Love about... At the, the Melbourne International yeah, Film Festival, yes. About the exiled um, Uyghur leader, Rabia Kadir. And mm -hmm. so, of course, and her coming to Australia at the same time. And, and I was thinking about that and it got me also thinking about something else that's been in the news lately, which is one of our greatest...